And the first ingredient is uh, going to be some white bucktail. Usually use about a, a matchstick length piece of bucktail on there. And the reason uh, we put the bucktail on first is so that it's underneath all the material. Because as you know, when bucktail gets wet, it expands and contracts. So if it's underneath the material, what it's going to do is give the fly some body. And they'll lift everything up and then get small again as you strip it. And as you pause it, it'll expand. And so anyhow, we lay on about a matchstick piece of bucktail and we're going to hang it about uh, two and a half hook lengths. We're going to let it hang on there past the hook and tie it on the top. And the, I want to run it back that far because I want it to be somewhere between the marabou dressing and the tips of the feathers. So, get that on there. Trim your excess at an angle. And then uh, wrap it on down. All right. So there's our bucktail. The next thing we're gonna put on is some white marabou. We're going to put uh, one piece on each side and we're going to piece of, put a piece of uh, green olive on the back to give it some color because it's going to imitate a pilchard is what it looks most like in the water. And uh, they have olive colored backs. You probably heard them called green backs. And that's why we choose uh, the olive color. I'm going to get a nice piece of marabou we want to uh, hang that maybe uh, two-thirds of the length of the bucktail. Usually hold that up to the side you already got on there and make sure it's about the same. that up a little bit. Now we're going to put on the green olive color. What did I do to that green olive color? There it is. Put one of those down the back. This fly also works pretty well on the beach and in the lights as well. Uh, I mentioned the, uh, you heard the fellow talking about fishing the beach, seeing some snook, and how they, they wouldn't take what he was offering. Uh, this is a good one for the beach, for you guys that like to walk, walk the beach. Center. You like to cut material back to where you can taper the head down so it's going to be nice and tapered and uh, shaped like a head. Okay, so so far that's what we got. The next step is uh, some white neck feathers. 
You want to use two on each side splayed in together, not out. Um, one thing I like to do on my feathers when I tie them on is to uh, flatten the stems with a pair of pliers so they don't roll on you. So try and pick out two, two good ones that are pretty close together in shape and length. You want that hanging about an inch beyond everything else, maybe an inch and a half. Okay. Trim, trim that. Pardon me? Yep. It's gonna it's gonna go uh, now probably about an inch beyond the marabou, <laughs> maybe a half inch beyond the bucktail. You want the bucktail to be about halfway between the marabou and the tips of the feathers. Okay. Take a pair of pliers and flatten those stems down. And that way they don't roll on you quite as bad when you tighten down the thread. Like the uh, the neck feathers are a little stiffer, and it gives it a little bit more of a bait shape when it gets wet. It doesn't get uh, real flat. You like to have a a good profile, and uh, when the feathers are splayed together like that, they give it kind of a, a bait shape uh, to it. Now you're putting two on each side. Two on each side. Yep. You could probably get away with one. Uh, but if you know if one of them breaks off in battle, then you're gonna have a lopsided fly. But this fly is pretty durable as well. I think, like a lot of flies, it actually catches better once you get a few fish on it. Next step is we're going to put a little flashaboo in there. Give a little bit of flash in the water. Um, when you're putting on flash, it's easy to, I think, overdo it sometimes. Uh, I usually use it fairly sparsely, like uh, maybe two or three, four strands down each side. I know sometimes uh, in really shallow water or in really clear water, I think. Sometimes there can be a little bit too much flash, uh, particularly if you're uh, maybe on some dark bottom and you're throwing a really light colored fly. I think sometimes there can be a little too much flash and the fish are turned off by it. But uh, anyhow, we're going to put this flashaboo about two thirds of the way down uh, the length of the body. Um, this is at um, like a crystal flash, like uh, you could use, you know, you could try some red or something like that. I prefer the crystal. It's more of a, a natural color, in my opinion. Uh, one of the nice things about this fly is uh, when you finish it off, you finish it off with an epoxy head, <clears throat> which will give it a little bit of weight, make it ride down in the water column uh, in the strike zone. Um, the, the eyes I have today <clears throat> are the prism eyes. They're raised, so they have a little bit of uh, contour to them. They also make the sticky ones that are just flat paper. Uh, I use I like the holographic ones. You could use just a white with a black pupil. Uh, the paper ones are really simple. They stick on there nice. Um, the ones that are kind of raised, I give it a little bit more of a push. Uh, you know, pushes just a little bit more water, but they both work well. Um, I just happen to have these raised ones at the moment. So. Okay. 
So now, continue to work on that head, make sure it's nice and water dynamic. And then the last thing we're going to put on is some peacock curl down the back. And uh, you want to use about the same as the bucktail, about a matchstick, maybe five or six strands, something like that. Um, you know, some of these materials you can use in synthetics as well. They work well. I'm kind of a natural kind of a guy. I like the natural materials. I think they just uh, make it look a little more authentic and lifelike in the water. But uh, the peacock curl, you're going to put about two-thirds of the length to, maybe three-quarters of the length of the body of the fly. So you don't want it hanging out past the tail, but you want to run it down the center of the back. Now the other thing is you might notice it is tied on the back of the hook and not the front of the hook. Uh, reason for that is is it cuts down on a lot of the fouling when you're casting. Uh, you might notice if you're throwing flies that have long feathers or long material and everything's tied on the front of the hook, oftentimes the feathers get hooked on the, on the bend of the hook and you're fixing a fouled fly quite a bit. Uh, the reason it's tied on the back is to cut back on that and it really does do a good job of uh, cutting back on that. Back before they had all this cool stuff with the adhesive backs, we used to use uh, plastic doll eyes that had a post on it. You'd have to snap the post off, mm -hmm. file down the stub, and uh, glue those babies on. This makes it a little easier. Okay. Now we're going to use uh, some five-minute epoxy. key to the epoxy is just staying on top of it. It helps to wet the material too so it doesn't fly up there and get in it. So you kind of want to kind of just work it, try and give it a good shape, try not to get any big globs. <laughs> 